On the next episode of Painting and Travel, Roger and Sarah visit Brunswick, Georgia. Sarah explores the area where Liberty ships were built during World War II, while Roger uses acrylics to paint a Victorian-style building in the park. southern coastal Georgia and this morning we're in Brunswick. It's an interesting town. We'll look around just a little bit later if we can, but they are expecting rain and you can see from the dark clouds it's going to get here pretty soon. But Roger did find something he'd like to paint so he'll start doing that. And then we'll take a little look around later and see what we can find. I think this is an interesting subject. It reminds me a bit of a lighthouse, although it's not. And I think although this structure is really the main focus of this painting, more of the painting will be concentrated in these palm trees, these big areas. So I'm going to try and make quick work of this today. Just put down a few colors, nice big shapes, and then we'll bring it back to the studio. But let's get started now. I've got three colors out in my palette, ultramarine blue, Indian yellow and alizarin crimson. These are three transparent colors and paints do vary according to manufacturers. Some are transparent, some are not. These are all three transparent colors and of course I have titanium white. Now this is an 11 by 14 inch piece of masonite with gesso and I've toned it with a bit of burnt sienna wash on there. I just like to do that to get rid of the the harshness of the board so I don't have to stare at a bright white board. I think I'll start with my dark colors and these palm trees. I'm going to mix all three of my colors together here. The ultramarine blue, Indian yellow, and alizarin crimson. And I've laid this in with charcoal because I wanted to express these large shapes so I could more easily understand the composition I'm going for rather than trying to draw little outlines here. Now I sort of have my values in here. Not really, not exactly, but it does give me a bit of a pattern to go by. Now since I have these in here, I can wipe this off, this charcoal, and it leaves just enough of it on the board for me to still see what I'm doing. Okay, with these three colors, which makes a very dark color here, I'm going to put in these big shapes of these palm trees. I have a three quarter inch brush here. These are very, very dark. And I'm not worrying about all the fronds and all the, the leaves that are part of these palm trees yet. I'm just going to put in these great big areas. Just block these in. I'll start with my darks first. I don't have to start with my darks first, but I, I tend to like to do that. It helps me uh, establish these darks. Now if I were working with oils this would be much more important to start with my darks than if I were working with acrylics because it's very hard to put uh, dark colors over light colors when using oils. But since the acrylics dry so fast it's not as nearly as much of an issue. Okay we have one more palm way back here next to the house. So I think this is more of a painting about palms and landscape than it is this house. Uh, there's a lot of nice detail in that house and that's something I'll try and put in while I'm back in the studio I think. Here we have another trunk over here. I'm just using the same colors, just these dark colors, three colors. Here we have one more small trunk down here. And there's a lot of other palms right over in this area. 
here. So I'm going to thin this just a bit and put just an indication of some more darks right back in here. And since I've thinned this, it's more, more of a wash. And then I can get my real darks and then some middle tones, dark middle tones, and then I'll start working on the lights. Over on this right side, I also have a lot of foliage that's hiding a lot of that house. And here again, I'll thin this and just put these sort of semi-dark middle tones in here, right in there. I'm not seeing the bottom part of my house here. I'm going to cut that off to concentrate more on these areas of the palms and this beautiful tower here. Back here, I'll kind of make that a middle tone too. Okay, so now we have some darks, some medium dark middle tones, and we've got this, this is what I would really call middle tone. I squint my eyes quite often when I'm looking at something like this, because I want to be sure I try and get the, the right values in here. Now, obviously the sky is the lightest part of this painting, but the edge of the tower right over here, maybe slightly brighter, especially when the sun is out. Now we've got clouds coming over today, so this is gonna vary quite a bit, but I think I'll reserve this area right here for the highlight of my painting. That means that I have to cut the sky back a little bit and make that a little darker. So here we go, we'll put in the sky now. It's not really a blue sky today, it's kind of overcast, but the sun is popping out every few minutes. That makes it really difficult in the field to paint paint on location because things change just all the time. Uh, I always take a number of photographs before I leave the location so I can finish these things in the studio if I need to, which will be the case today. Okay, so here we have kind of a really nice middle tone gray here. It's almost a purple. I'm not sure if that's the right color. Maybe it's a little too purple. Let me put a little more blue in there. Now with these acrylics, you know they dry very, very fast. And that is a disadvantage to many people. And this is totally dry. This will work to my advantage because now I can paint the sky over this and not have to worry about this dark color mixing with this light color. Working with oils and acrylics, they both have their advantages. Right in here we've got posts and things, but I'm just going to block this out as solid sky right now. Right down here and right up the edge of that roof line. Down here on this side. Now it's going to be fun in a little while to add some negative areas in here. Now in my drawing, when I look up at the top of that cone there, uh, on the bottom part of that cone, it's it's octagonal, but uh, still it's, you know, I consider that round. So I want to be sure when I draw this, that I draw this a nice ellipse in there. I don't want to just draw from one side to the other and make an ellipse from one side to the other. I want to continue that ellipse all the way around because that will give me a nice smooth look to this. The same thing right here. When I draw the top of that, I want to be sure that ellipse comes up, over, and I'll actually draw it back around the other side too. That'll give me a nice, true looking ellipse in there. If I were just to start on this side and stop there, I would get something that just looked, could look more like, like that. So, so I want this to curve around right on the edges here. Well, I think I'll stay with this three quarter inch brush for a couple of more minutes. And I'll take the sky color here and I'll just darken it. Now, when I look at that building, it looks very warm to me. I'm not sure why it does. Actually on this side of the building, it should feel like a cool color because it's getting the light from the sky. But as I look at that, it, looks, it still looks warm as compared to the sky. Maybe that's because it's not a pure white. The building is not a, a real white. It may be kind of a yellowish color to begin with. 
So we'll try that. We'll try this color right, oops, see, when I put that on, I can see this and this is almost the same value. That's not good. This is definitely darker than the sky. So I'm left with two choices. Do I make the sky lighter or do I make this darker? In this case, I'm going to make this darker. Oops, I've already put in the sky. So more with these three colors. And since I'm using just three colors, it, uh, I don't have to really think too much about what colors to use. I just start mixing these until I get the right tone. I can surprisingly make a lot of colors and a, lo a lot of grays with just those three colors. Okay, see now that's a darker gray right there. Here comes the sun. <laughs> Another thing I always bring with me is this little atomizer. It has a nice fine spray to it. I can spray that every once in a while to keep things wet. Here we have this side of the house. I'm not even gonna put the windows in there yet. I sketched them in earlier, but I don't need to leave those right now. Three quarter inch brush here is just laying in the large areas and the large shapes. I think what I'm going to try and do today here in the field is just get some good color notes down and not worry about the detail. Now, as I look at this building, it's very clear that this roof is much cooler than the building here. This may be too dark, too cool, but one thing I've learned about painting is it's all about adjusting the colors and the values all the time as I go. And until I get the whole thing covered, it's really hard to know if those values and the colors are right. Uh, I know some artists can hit these things right on the mark, uh, but I seem to have to adjust my colors and my values as the painting progresses. So right now, here I am just dealing with these big shapes in here. Here we have that roof that goes across the bottom. Some of that is starting to catch more sunlight. I try and put enough paints out on my palette here to get me through a whole session. If I just put a few little dabs of paint, these tend to dry fast too. So that's another advantage to put out enough paints on the palette so these acrylics won't dry. You know, it's just really hard to judge these colors, what they really are. As many years as I've been painting and all, it's just, uh, it, it's always a challenge, so if you're new to this, don't get discouraged because uh, it's, it's always a new experience out here painting. Uh, because paintings like this are not formula paintings. Painting outside here is very much more about looking at things and seeing things than it is about really putting the paint on the canvas. If I can't see this thing, Clearly then uh, I can't paint it very well. Okay, we'll start up here. We'll make this the top of this cone here. That will be somewhat darker. But underneath this cone, it's going to be fairly warm because it's picking up all the warmth from the ground. So I'm going to touch more red in there. So this should be a warm color right in here. When I say a warm color, I don't mean bright red or anything like that. It's just a, a warm gray. Now, I do notice that this cone comes out over the edge of this building slightly. And when I get back to the studio, I may have to adjust the size and shape of this cone a little bit. All right, let's put the highlight on the side of this. We'll take some yellow, white. Maybe I'll just stay with that. And the sun has gone in. It has every couple of minutes here, but as I remember, we just had this nice patch of warm light right on the side of that. Now, since this is round, I won't have a hard edge here. So I'll put this on, on the edge, and then maybe I'll spray this slightly, and then I'll take my background color again, and we'll try and blend these two together. And with oils, this would be very easy to blend these two. With acrylics, they dry so fast that it's much more difficult. 
Here's another thing I sometimes do when painting in the field. I'll start a painting in acrylics, I'll bring it back to the studio, and I'll finish it in oils. So that's a nice uh, alternative to painting strictly in acrylics or strictly in oil. Well, I think I'll add some more green to these. I like to start these trees out with a warm color in here. You can see this is a very reddish, burnt sienna, brownish color. Just really dark, but it's very warm. So now I'm going to take my Indian yellow, ultramarine blue, and these are transparent colors, so they're still going to be very dark. And I can start adding some greens to this. A lot of the interiors of this tree are very warm because of the trunk and all the dead foliage sort of inside this tree area. So that's why I like to start with that dark, warm color underneath. Okay, I'm just putting a few touches here with this green, dark area right under this, the eave of this house. That also will be warm because it's picking up a warmth from the the ground. Today these are really just color notes to myself. This color here is the color of the sky. And I'm going to put just a few sky holes in here, negative areas, just for fun. Now I want some negative areas in here, but I'll also take some of the dark color and I'll bring that out to make the palm leaves on the edge. Right here we have a window, another one right over here. I've changed this composition some just to suit myself. I've pushed these palm trees apart a little more than they are. Wow, everything has turned gray now. I don't see the highlight on that side of the tower at all. It's really getting pretty, cl pretty cloudy now. My Indian yellow and burnt sienna. I'll put a few palm leaves here. I'll spray this board. What that does is it helps for this paint to flow over the, the other paint easily. So I can just drag these palm leaves out from the center here like this. With this blue color, I'm just going to indicate a few of these uh, slats here on this galvanized roof, tin roof. Now, last week I was doing a painting in St. Augustine, and it was of a, a, a large building. And I worked primarily in the studio, and I was working from photographs. And that particular photograph in the studio, the building looked perfectly white. And it was a good photograph, but the building looked so white. And, but I knew the, the building in actuality was sort of a cream color. So that's one reason to be out here in the field, is to try and get some good color notes of what things actually are. Because if I work strictly from a photograph, often the colors will not be correct. Working outside like this is more of a learning experience than anything. It's often hard to get a good painting out here in the field because of the conditions. Boy, another thing that we have to deal with out here in the field with these acrylics is the wind. Uh, it's very moist out here this morning, but the wind just dries these things almost instantly. I'm going to take some of this color here from the roof. I'm just going to put a slight bit of that on the, on the side here. There's a small house over here. I kind of like that. It's got some palms on top of it, but I think in order to express the shape of that roof, I think I'll eliminate the palms behind that house, little building, make this right here the top of that building. Actually, I'm compressing these two together just for the composition to keep this building closer to this one. This building here is actually a bit further away, but I'm not trying to do a, an historic painting here particularly. I always feel free to move things and change things around. I'm not trying to make a photograph here. I'm not trying to uh, paint things exactly the way they are. I'm just painting them to suit myself and to hopefully suit the composition as best I can. This is the side of that house. So I'll just 
put some color right in there. And then with some blue, some cooler color, we'll put this roof on that house. And it's quite bright, brighter than the sky. So here we got a couple more color notes to work with. Mix some green up again with my ultramarine blue, Indian yellow, and a touch of alizarin crimson. And we'll just fill in a couple areas right here with some more of that foliage that's kind of down low. Have another window right under this one. Some very nice Victorian filigree or some woodwork up there. We'll put that in later. Well, we definitely have some rain coming in very shortly, so I'm going to leave this painting as it is with just these few color notes on it. I'll take a number of photographs here so I have some good reference. So then when we get back to the studio, I'll finish it there. We're in Mary Ross Waterfront Park, which fronts the Brunswick River and has a deep harbor friendly to huge container ships, smaller cruise ships, and shrimp boats. And at the other end of the park, you'll find an excellent model of a Liberty ship and a memorial plaque commemorating the tremendous war effort that took place just about a mile south of here by a labor force of over 16,000 men and women who built 99 steel vessels for the Merchant Marine during World War II. These rugged ships carried cargo and troops and became known as Liberty ships. Incredibly, every month, shipyard workers produced four Liberty ships, measuring 447 feet long. However, during the month of December 1944, the determined yard workers built an astounding seven ships. The large bays where the ships were built are still standing and in use today, but not for full-scale heavy ship manufacturing as they once were. Brunswick's famed Liberty ships are long gone, but the people who built them and their significant contribution to America's wartime effort remain solid and unforgotten. It's a short walk from the Riverfront Park to the pet-friendly historic downtown area, which I enjoyed walking around in. We saw a number of restaurants, several antique stores, and other specialty shops. I looked at vintage clothing, antique plates, fishing supplies, and gifts. Nick came along for the ride, safely sightseeing from his backpack. Well, here in the studio, this is what I did to finish this painting. The very first thing I needed to do was work on the accuracy of this tower. And I used a T-square to get it perfectly vertical. Of course, I needed the peak of this tower to fall right in the middle of this tower, so I measured that for accuracy as well. And then I used my photographs that I took on location to get the proportions just right. Here you can see just how far off that was. I decided to change the color of the sky. It just looked too purple to me once I got back here in the studio. I painted the sky color over the reworked pencil drawing, but enough of the pencil lines shown through so I can still go back and add the railings and other details. With the small brush, I started to refine the details on the dark side and then the light side of this tower. Right here under this roof, these dark colors were made with a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Holding one finger on the side of my ruler helps steady my hand to get a good straight line. A nice flowing oval shape was set in place and then the rest of the railing material was painted, starting with the back parts and moving to the front side. The same procedure was added above this railing to give it that Victorian look. Then I worked my way down this tower, refining the colors first with a warmish gray color, and then around to the other side with a warm yellow color on the sunny side. While these acrylics were still wet, I blended these two areas together and then added a warm reflected light on the far left side of the tower. A suggestion of those shingles were painted, and as the oval moved closer to the base of the house, those ovals began to get slightly narrower. A hint of individual shingles were added on the light side and the dark side. And then finally the dark rim around the top of the tower. I moved down the roof of the house and added the detail again using a ruler as a guide. I thickened the lines here and there just so it wouldn't look quite so mechanical. And the same work was done on the front porch. The side of the house came next and I 
put a shadow under here and just started to tidy up that area. A few more small highlights on the roof, and then the window frames were next added by some awnings. More posts and gingerbread on the porch. And then I moved to the palms. The dark colors served well to begin with, which now allowed me to begin lightening them, allowing for lots of those dark underneath colors to remain. More palms and foliage were added here to the painting, which I didn't get a chance to do all on location. Then the fun area of creating these negative areas of sky between these palm leaves. A bit tricky, but the idea is not so much to describe the sky, but those sky holes actually help to find the branches and leaves of the palm. Then I continued by lightening some of these areas of the palm, but being careful not to lighten them too much. I wanted them basically to remain dark, but I did add a few highlights to the few of the palm fronds. To finish the painting, I added a few subtle touches of sunlight, hitting a few areas of the house and the roof, even though nothing like that was evident while on location or in the photos. It just seemed to need a little more variation, and those few touches helped. Sarah and I enjoyed our trip to Brunswick. It was an interesting town, lots of history, and lots of places to set up and paint. I think that's all I have time for, so I'll sign it. We'll take one last look. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.